Hey everyone, Georgie here with Ukraine Matters. So, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah, it is a wild ride. The elections in the United States have just concluded and it was expected it's going to be narrow margin uh, for either Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. In the end, uh, as the votes started coming in through the night, we saw and started comparing the results from previous elections and what was the results for Biden with what was delivered for Harris. And while it seemed that Harris sort of improved in more urbanized areas, at the end, it was underperformance in all categories, I think except for a black man and black women. Donald Trump has been elected as the president of the United States, and now this is the reality that we are finding ourselves in. And I want us all to acknowledge that it was an exercise in democracy. Both sides made their cases, and the MAGA Republican side won. Their cases resonated stronger with the American population than the case against Donald Trump. And it was seen not only in the presidential campaign, it was seen not only in the Senate campaign, not only in the House campaign, as we're kind of expecting the results also to be favoring to Republican, but also in the popular vote. The America has chosen and they've chosen Donald Trump. Now, there has been a lot of discussion here, maybe whether or not this will be the last election that we're going to have and so on, yada, yada. But this was democratic election nonetheless. And therefore, I am extending my congratulations to President-elect Donald Trump and the Republican Party. I am staying still true to everything that I said before this election, everything that I still believe. But my case obviously didn't resonate with the American population. So to the victor go the spoils. So especially for you, for all of the Republicans and so on, as I already expressed my congratulations, but also I'm asking my moderating team to specifically under this video to please not moderate. So if you have things to say, uh, write about how Trump is going to be great, how Trump is going to fix everything, um, own the libs, so to say, uh, about telling me how wrong I was, you're very welcome to do it under this video. This is uh, your time to do your victory lap. Please use it. But for everyone else, I want this video to be more constructive as I want us all to be more anchored towards some kind of uh, objectives and goals uh, while our emotions kind of even out and we get through these stages of grief, so to say, uh, to the point of acceptance while also standing on a point. I'm going to separate this video into three parts, talking about the consequences and actions that should America and the European Union do going forward. Second part would be talking about Ukraine, what are the consequences and what Ukraine can do going forward. And the third part, myself and our team and this channel, what is the consequences and what we can do going forward. Let's start by talking about the United States. And I want to be very clear that I'm talking not to the part of the United States that have elected Trump and that have been supporting Trump and is supporting Trump majority of you will be fine except for the some that just bought it into lie but the part that didn't vote for trump and realized what kind of threat it was i am talking specifically to you trump is not going to have any checks and balances he has the senate he has the house he has the supreme court he has full possibility to mold United States specifically in what he wants it to become. Now, there are various scenarios where the, the way that it can go. We don't know specifically what Trump is going to do. There has been expectations for the Project 2025, which is probably most likely, but also other options are possible. The main point is that there is no more checks and balances on Trump. He is going to mold the United States in his image, and he's going to make decisions that will directly influence your life. So first thing that you need to focus on right now is to find someone that can support you additionally. The worst thing that can happen to you is for you to be left alone. Find a group, find a friend, and I'm not talking about online friends. I'm talking about real life neighbors, friends, and so on. Someone that can have your back in case things go really south. Secondly, we've I've been living through some of the hard times and the rule number one of any kind of hard times is you need to have a plan B. 
I don't know if it's savings, if it's potentially sale of something, if it's getting something, but it's definitely some kind of a thing that you need to have in mind in case everything goes south. And everything that is going to happen is going to be dependent on you and the person and or a group even better that you can find in your direct proximity that can support you. It is crucial for you to do this. And my hope is that you there will be more actionable and you actually start creating some localized groups like this for your communities. Because remember, while about 50% of uh, your neighbors and communities voted for Trump, there is another half that didn't. And there is a lot of people that are going to be on the receiving end and are going to have hard times coming for them. The best way to go through hard times is to have nearby someone that can always help out with anything. Then talking about Europe and transatlantic partnership. United States has made a decision to go back in time. If you potentially didn't know, but before the world wars, United States was uh, relatively chill towards their attitude to Europe. They were not having such a intrinsic connections between the two different continents. With the election of Donald Trump, we will see return to this type of relationship with the United States. So your thinking process should start consider how do we live when United States is not here to support us. That can go first and foremost for the defense but it will also go for the, our politics. It should also define how are we are acting on our continent. So for transatlantic partnership, specifically if we're talking something like NATO or trade, US is stopping basically to be our ally. It is becoming our, I wouldn't say competitor, but it's more becoming like a transactional partner. We will still have trade, we will still have some kind of business operations. We will still have some political dealings, but it's going to be transactionally based. So it's not going to be any kind of spirit of friendship or, or good camaraderie. We are now on our own and it's about time we finally realize that. And if we want to pull some kind of a sil silver lining through all of this for the European Union, I wanted always, always for the Europe to be more a bit able to solve its own issues. Well, now, essentially, if you want to put it this way, the big guy is out of the room, and now we are left with this rabid dog that is trying to crawl its way into our neighborhood. It is now up to us to decide what we're going to do with it. The biggest thing our politicians can and should do is to push for more autonomy and ability for, of us to solve our issues. I would like us to come out of this with more unity than less. The risky scenario that we we're going to have is if we're going to have some people like Schultz or some other parties that will look at the Trump being elected and they will use this as an excuse to do less for a common defense of Europe. Essentially, with the looming threat in the East, they would maybe try to Finlandize first Ukraine, but then the more uh, eastern plank of uh, NATO. And NATO, again, is also going to become transactional. So we should not expect US to come to our aid. There is not like there's going to be talks about us increasing the defense spending, but it is not going to be guaranteeing anything that the United States will come for our defense. Because again, any kind of actions Trump wants to do, he will do. So there is nothing that says that United States will need to go. He's not the person that is going to be following uh, the rules that uh, have been established. It's going to be the same as a lot of dictators. It's what he wishes to happen. And that will happen. They will not be able, he will not be able to pull out of NATO because there needs to be like a whole procedure for that, though it is possible. But there will definitely be a lot more uh, discussion how and why United States should even participate in our European affairs. So if we will see that there will be 
actual separation for some of the politician and political parties in Europe that will state that we should potentially pe peacify Russia, we should start maybe consider some kind of negotiations. At that moment, I'm expecting that we will see a breakdown of Europe. We will see discourse inside of the European politics and we will start seeing, hopefully, as a solution, the separation into the two-speed Europe, where there will be a coalition of the willing that will be willing to take action, make reforms, and it seems that this coalition will be centered around the uh, Central European countries and the Nordics. Right now, maybe France, maybe some other countries in Europe like Romania or, or some other places, because the threat is real and that threat is coming. On a personal level, this will mean one very specific thing that it has never been more important for you to become politically active. It has never been more important for us to get to our politicians to make sure they understand that the time for Europe to take care of our own problems is now. I would want us to do it no matter who is the president. I would want us to do with maybe Kamala Harris coming as a president. But a lot of our political class has been complacent and it is about time our political class does something about it, no matter what MAGA Republicans or uh, Democrats are stating. We need to get our shit together and therefore it is up to us to now start writing our politicians that they should be doing things on our own, that we should be making closer discussions, that we should be proposing this coalition of the willing. Become politically active, stay close with this channel because I will be coming a political active, but more about that later. And now let's talk about Ukraine. For Ukraine and Ukrainians, this elections will probably hit the hardest because you are right now on the receiving end of the most brutal invasion in the 21st century since the Second World War, and you know that. The way that you need to go forward is essentially that your help has been cut in half. I am pretty confident that the Northern European states will continue support to Ukraine. I'm hoping that if we in Europe increase our dedication to solve our problems ourselves, we will continue seeing production being um, scaled up in Europe and also in Ukraine. So there will be some help coming, but you should be expecting that that help will be halved. That means that the world war will be bloodier, longer than expected. I believe that uh, President Zelensky will try to do its best to see if they can get some kind of a, maybe a transactional deal with President Trump. Again, I think uh, transactional is the key word with Trump. And most importantly, you should expect that Russia will get influx of a lot of power to itself because Trump will most likely again do more transactional and more business as usual style um, discussions with Putin and leave, lifting a lot of the sanctions from Russia. So a lot of the chips, weapons, uh, a lot of trade will go into Russia and Russia will become much, much stronger. They will also be able to sell the oil. So all of the options should be on the table. It should be explored by the your uh, government and what kind of casualties, if you want to or can accept, it should be discussed realistically by your society. Know that right now, Europe, it is behind you, but it seems more and more likely that unless we're going to get this two-speed Europe with the coalition of the willing that will be willing to defend uh, no uh, Northern and Eastern Europe, until then, there is little to no help that you might expect. So everything should be on the table. Remember, this is a fight for your survival. I don't need to educate you on having a plan B. You've been through this war for many months now. Just please know that the situation just got incredibly worse for the next maybe half a year some of the longer term contracts and help have been dedicated and it will be coming we should dispel all notions of a quick ukrainian victory i know a lot of you are expecting the scenario where trump comes to putin but putin is too arrogant to work with trump and therefore uh, instead trump says okay then i'm gonna send everything all of the weapons to ukraine and ukraine just wins but i'm sorry but this is a little bit of a wet dream you're having it's it's not going to happen. I mean, if it happens, 
I will be glad to be wrong, but you should not expect it. More importantly, before the elections, I told you that Trump's victory is the only scenario in which Putin can crawl its way back into this war and not lose it long term. But because of the things that I've said before, we might see again Russia becoming stronger and solidifying their axis of evil. And you are right now almost completely alone. Stay strong. We'll try to do what we can, but you also need to consider where you are. And finally, a couple of words about this channel. In a long time, I haven't felt so energized as I am now. In a long time, I haven't felt that what I'm doing here is important. It's important for multiple reasons. One is that I truly believe in big, strong Europe that is democratic, that is fighting against the authoritarian hand. And the fact that we're having more challenges against it and not less means that I and everyone else that understands it needs to do more. This community, because I know what this community cares about, we will need to do more. That's why I will probably dedicate more time and do more myself, maybe in political aspects, maybe in weaponizing aspects, in any other aspects that can help boost their coherence, working and uh, unity in Europe to stand against the aggressors. I will be here trying to do my best. The core principles and the core points that made this channel happen to make sure that A, Ukraine wins and ultimately democracy prevails in Europe and we stand against the axis of evil still stands as a core principle of this channel and it's been reinforced by the challenges. And secondly, because I followed the elections in the United States so much, because I've heard so much from both my moderating team and from the people in the United States, I understand that right now is going to be tough time and you will need places and a friend shoulder and a friend to talk to that can explain what you can do and how you can help and how we can try to move to improve this world. So not only for people in Europe, but the United States, if you will need a friend, if you will need a person that would be able there to stand up and show that there are still people that care for democracy and a community that cares for democracy, we are here. Join up. Nothing is stopping. We're going forward. I love you. Slava Ukraini. Stay strong. And I'll see you next time. Ukraine.